Hello everyone and welcome to our third virtual nature in the classroom lesson. Today is going to be our lesson to focus on mammals. So what you're going to need is a picture of one of our skull specimens from below, your nature journal you've been working in for the last few days, a dichotomous key which is a tool we'll be using later that's also in the description below, colored pencils, and a pencil. So the first thing we want to talk about is what even is a mammal? So there are three main things that make a mammal a mammal, kind of the most important things to separate them from every other animal. So go ahead and open your journal to page number 11, and we're gonna go over those three things together. So the first thing that comes to a lot of people's mind is warm-blooded. And so all mammals are warm-blooded, but actually there are other animals who are warm-blooded too. Birds are warm-blooded. There are actually some weird fish out there who are warm-blooded. So that one's not as important to describe a mammal. But one thing that is really important is being covered in fur and hair. Okay, so number one, we're gonna write down fur slash hair. So we can tell what group an animal belongs to based on what it's covered in. Like I said, for us mammals, that's our nice fur and hair. For birds, they have their big feathers. Reptiles and fish are gonna have their scales. Things like amphibians are gonna have their nice slimy skin and all your like kind of invertebrates like insects and arachnids and stuff will have a hard exoskeleton. Okay. So our next thing is going to be how we have babies. Okay. So most mammals are going to give live birth. So if an animal gives live birth, that's a good sign it's probably a mammal. There are a few examples out there who aren't. There are actually a couple of sharks who give live birth and a couple of reptiles, like some lizards who give live birth. And there are actually two very special mammals who don't give live birth. You might be able to figure out who these are, but just in case you don't know, one of our egg-laying mammals is gonna be the duck-billed platypus. They're a real funky animal that lives in Australia. They have a big duck bill, a weird beaver tail. They kind of swim around and they lay eggs. Now this other one is a little less well known, but the spiny echidna, okay? Spiny echidnas, they're little spike balls. They kind of look like a porcupine or a hedgehog in that sense where they have big long quills. They also have a really thin kind of narrow duck bill, big digging claws. If you ever played Sonic the Hedgehog, his best friend Knuckles is supposed to be echidna even though he doesn't really look like one. Okay. And our very last thing that makes a mammal a mammal, and this is kind of the most important because this is what mammals are named after, is that we produce milk for our young. So number three is gonna be produce milk. So all female mammals will produce milk for their babies Milk is a really high in fat, high in protein, delicious, nutritious liquid that moms will make from their bodies. So every mammal is going to do it. Of course, the cow is the most popular and famous example. We go to the store and buy cow's milk, but everything from a rat, a dog, a gorilla, a goat, a human, they all produce milk. And actually, the area of the body that produces milk is called the mammary gland, and that's where you actually get the name mammal. Okay. So, what we're gonna be focusing on today with our mammals is in particular, we're gonna be looking at their skulls. Take a second and I want you to think, what could we even learn about an animal just by looking at its skull? Okay, so what we can learn is there's a couple things. One, if we have a kind of medium-sized skull or a really big skull, you know, kind of the size of the animal, right? If I bring you a huge skull, you're like, that's a huge animal. Teeny tiny skull, that's a small animal. Uh, you can tell if they're a predator animal or a prey animal based on where their eyes are. There's a little popular saying, eyes to the front, born to hunt, eyes to the side, born to hide. So like an animal, like a tiger, their eyes are gonna be in the front of their face so they could watch their prey while it's running away. While a prey species, like a deer, their eyes are gonna be on the side. That way, when they're down and grazing, they have a bigger field of vision to see if anyone is sneaking up on them. Some other things you can learn is for some animals, you might be able to figure out the age of the animal based on certain structures in the teeth or how certain bones are fused together, if it's a juvenile or an adult. Uh, you can kind of tell some things about 
different parts of their anatomy, where ears are located, where eyes are located. And if you're really, really good with skulls, I can just hand you a skull and you can tell me, hey, that's a bear skull. So you can tell me exactly what animal it is. But what we're really gonna focus on today is we're gonna focus on being able to tell our animal's diet based on looking at the skull. And in particular, to be able to tell what type of diet our animal has, you're gonna be looking at their teeth. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna go over all the different types of teeth our mammal can have and what we can learn from we're those different shapes. started now filling in some background information. This is gonna kind of be our main tool today to help us figure out our animal's diet. So take a look at page 12 in your book, and we're actually gonna skip down to that diagram you have at the bottom with the picture of the skull. Yes, you can see my lovely drawing, but yours in your book is much better. In a mammal's mouth, there are four types of teeth, but today we're gonna to focus on three main types to kind of help us tell what our animal's diet is. So those very first front ones, okay, our flat ones in the front of our mouth, those are called incisors. Right? So go ahead and write incisors on that line. That next one, right behind our incisors, the kind of sharp pointy ones, those are gonna be our canines. Okay? So you can see we have our canines here, the big old sharp pointy ones. Go ahead and write that down. And last, all of those back teeth those are actually split into two different types of teeth, the premolar and the molars, but they tell us the same kind of information and they, they have very similar shapes to each other. So today we're just gonna group premolars and molars all together and call them just all molars. All right, so go ahead and put molars on this bottom line for me. Now those are the three main types of teeth that every mammal will have, and we're gonna go over what information we can get by the shapes and the sizes of those different types of teeth. Okay, so we have this chart that's gonna be at the top of page 12 we're gonna go over. Uh, first, we want to write down our types of diet. Okay, so what would you call an animal who only eats meat? Take a second, think about it, and then think about what you would call an animal who only eats plants. So our meat eaters, those are gonna be our carnivores. So we're gonna write carnivore in this top side box. And then our plant eaters, those are our herbivores. And we're gonna write that in our bottom box, okay? or bottom side box. Of course, we there is another group. There are omnivores who like to eat a little bit of meat, a little bit of plants, but it's really hard to tell an omnivore based on its teeth because it's gonna have an interesting mix of herbivore teeth and carnivore teeth. So today we're gonna kind of pretend that omnivores don't exist. And our main goal is gonna be to tell if our animal is mostly a herbivore or mostly a carnivore. And then the last thing we need to do to set up this table is write the, those three types of teeth across the top. So we're gonna do incisors first, then our canines, and then our molars. So go ahead, take a second to make sure your table and I'll chart below look like mine. And go over the different shapes and sizes and actually some of their function. So let's talk first about our carnivores incisors. Carnivore incisors, they're going to be little squares or they might have a little bit of a sharp point to them okay so I want you guys to be drawing these along with me and then you can pause at the end if you need to catch up so yeah little squares or they might have a little point and these are the smallest teeth in our carnivores and mouth and I want you to think what do you use your front teeth for and when you're eating what what job do they have because it's gonna be the same for our animals Right, when we're eating our incisors, we're doing to, like we're using them to take that very first bite, okay? So that's what our carnivores who are eating meat, they're using those incisors to kind of take those first rips and chunks of meat, okay? They're also, they can take really delicate bites with these teeth. So if you've ever seen like a movie like The Lion King or maybe anything like on Animal Planet, these are the teeth that like mom predators can carry around their babies with because they can be super gentle with them. On the opposite end, now we're gonna talk about our herbivore incisors. These are gonna be look crazy. This is gonna be kind of a side view, all right? All right. So yeah, this is like a weird, crazy side view. Uh, I want you to think of like a beaver's front teeth or a rabbit's front teeth. All right, they're really big, they're long, they're curved. These are actually gonna be the largest teeth in their mouth. Just. 
Now these work in a similar way where our animals are gonna be taking those very first few bites of food with those front teeth, but their food that they're eating is gonna be a lot tougher and harder to eat, right? Imagine eating a really nice steak, right? That's easy, that's soft, compared to going outside and chewing on a stick, right? That's gonna damage your teeth, that's really hard and rough and tough. So you might actually notice that in some herbivores' teeth, they have a nice like orange yellow color to the front of them. That's not because they're dirty and they didn't brush. That's actually because herbivores are gonna have a buildup of iron in those front incisors. And that iron makes their teeth stronger so they can chew through that really hard material like those trees, those leaves, those seeds, those nuts, whatever particular part of the plant they are eating. Next, we are gonna move on to our carnivores canines. Think about a canine. What do you, what's the first thing that comes to your mind, right? They're really long, they're sharp. I want you to think like a wolf's long tooth, a tiger's long tooth, even a saber tooth tiger, those really, really crazy long ones. So they're gonna be long and pointy and curved. And these are gonna be our largest teeth in the carnivore's mouth, okay? The largest. So now what are these used for? Well, they kind of have a similar job to the incisors. They're helping rip out meat and like take it and move it back to the rest of the mouth. But these are also a carnivore's main weapon. This is kind of what they're doing their killing with when they're hunting. So like a lion will use these to bite down on an animal's neck to make sure it dies. Um, they're really sharp. They may use them to like choke something or bleed them out, right? So think about it like almost having a knife in your mouth all the time. So if that's what a carnivore's canine is for, long, sharp, meant for ripping and killing, what do we think a herbivore who's mostly eating plants, what kind of stuff will their canine look with? Well, that was kind of a trick question. Most herbivores are just not gonna have any canines. So we're gonna go ahead and put a big X in this box. So most herbivores are actually gonna go incisors, big empty gap, and then their molars. Okay. So there are a few special herbivores out there like deers who will have teeny tiny canines that you can't really tell and they won't really have that much of a function anymore. But most of them have a gap that they can use to either like rip leaves off of, like they might put a branch in their mouth and swipe on it, or they might help them like push seeds and nuts into their mouth. Okay. So yeah, just a big empty gap. Now we're going to move on to our carnivores molars. So our carnivore molars, they're gonna look like this. They are gonna be sharp and bumpy. They look almost like a crown or a mountain top. So these are, think about how we use our molars, right? We're doing most of the actual chewing with our back teeth. Same with our two groups of animals. But since the food they're eating is so different, the ways that their molars help them chew is different. These guys, they're, the carnivores have those long kind of sharp spiky molars that kind of help slice and cut apart meat. They all slide across each other like scissors. And you might notice I drew a really big spike here. So some of our carnivores, particularly the dog group, so like coyotes and wolves, they have that big spike because they like to break into bone. Because inside bone is something really yummy known as marrow. So bone marrow is really high in protein and it's really good for animals. Uh, that's why our pet dogs at home like to chew on bones so much. And actually humans enjoy marrow too. We'll add it in all sorts of different recipes. So our very last tooth we have to go over is gonna be our herbivore's molar. It's gonna look a little different than our last one. Take a second, think if this one's sharp and spiky to help me rip and cut apart meat, what do we think someone who's chewing on plants is gonna look like? So the answer is it's gonna be kind of flat and bumpy, all right? So think about it this way. They're eating lots of hard, tough plants like leaves, and so it's really hard to digest that stuff. So their teeth, they kind of grind on top of each other. So they'll put the plant matter like in between and they grind it up to make a nice mush. So these are all of our different teeth, and this is gonna kind of be our main tool today to be able to tell what type of diet our animal has. So take a second, pause the video here, make sure you fill in this chart, and you're gonna probably wanna refer back to this chart later on in the lesson when you're trying to figure stuff out. Now let's turn to page 13, and we're just gonna focus on the very top part. So on the top of page 13, we are gonna be making a hypothesis. 
So if you think back to our other two lessons that we did, there are two main parts to our hypothesis that we need. Our first part is what we think, our prediction, our guess. And then our last part is our reason because, our reason why. And today, our particular hypothesis we're gonna make is if our skull is either a herbivore or a carnivore, okay? So go ahead, open up your picture of a skull and look back at that chart of teeth we just made to see which teeth best match your skull. And I want you to be specific. So I don't want you to say, I think my skull is a carnivore because of the teeth, right? That doesn't tell me a lot of information. I want you to be more like, I think my skull is a carnivore because it has really long and sharp canines or because the molars are nice and spiky, okay? So be specific, tell me what type of tooth and the shape or size of that tooth that's letting you know that, okay? We could do a quick example of mine. So this is my skull. I think my skull is a herbivore. I think my skull is a herbivore. because it has long incisors. So go ahead, pause the video here for a couple of minutes, come up with your own hypothesis, and then we'll move on to the rest of this page. So now we're gonna take a look at the bottom of page 13, where we're gonna do four scientific drawings about our skull. So go ahead, get your color pencils out, your pencil out, and make sure you have your picture of your skull next to you so you can see what to draw. The four drawings we're gonna make is we're gonna do one drawing of our incisors, one drawing of our canines, if our skull has canines, a drawing of our molars, and a drawing of the whole entire skull. You just need to draw one of each type of tooth so you don't have to draw every incisor, but just one, not every molar, just one. And I want you to think back to those last two lessons we've done. What are the four main things we said we needed in our scientific drawings? Right, the first one we need is color. So you can see I added a little bit of color to my teeth. Luckily skulls are mostly kind of black and white so there isn't too much color we need, but add as much color as you think is appropriate. Next we need to add our scale bar. So if you remember our scale bar is when we are measuring our object and then we put that measurement on the paper. And we are using centimeters since this is scientific. So for example, my incisor was one and a half centimeters long. And you should be able to see all of this in the pictures that we provided. Next, you're gonna to wanna to add some labels. I added a few labels to my skull here. You don't have to worry too much about labeling your teeth because we already know this is the incisor, this is the molar. But down here on your whole skull drawing, try and get some labels on there. You do things like the eyes, the nose, each type of tooth as you're going. And then our last thing you need to get is details. Okay, so look for all those fine details you might have missed. Add some cracks, add some little bumps or any, any sort of small extra information you could add in those small details. Okay, so once again, we want color, details, label, and scale bar. So I'm gonna give you about 10 to 15 minutes. So go ahead, pause this video, and try to draw out your skull. one last page to do for our mammal skull lesson so take a look at page 14 so this is a really cool activity where you're gonna to get to figure out what animal your skull is the way we're gonna figure this out is a very specific tool known as a dichotomous key so I want you to pull up the dichotomous key it should be in the links below the way this works is you're gonna have two choices for each sentence so let's work on my skull together Okay, so remember my skull from before, I'll put up a couple pictures for each step. So our first step, step one, we have two options. So 1A, the skull has one long yellow or orange incisor on each side of the upper jaw. Or step B, the skull has white incisors. So taking a look at my skull, which one of those options fits best? Do I have orange incisors or white incisors? Right, the answer is orange incisors. So we're gonna go to step number two. If we said white incisors, we would have skipped all the way down to step number seven. But since we said orange incisors, we're gonna skip down to step number two. The next part is gonna have us measure our skull. So 2A, the skull is longer than five centimeters, or 2B, the skull is shorter than five centimeters.
Well, if we remember from our drawing earlier, my skull was 11 centimeters long. So what do we pick, A or B? Right, so we're gonna go ahead and pick A. So that means we're just gonna go right down to number three. Right. Same thing, we read A and B, and we figure out which choice to do next. So 3A, there are four molars on each side of the upper and lower jaw. Or 3B, there are more than four molars on each side of the lower and upper jaw. So let's count our molars. Okay. So for our upper molars, we have one, two, three, four. For our lower molars, we have one, two, three, four. We have four so, molars on both the upper and lower jaw. What does that mean? That means we choose option A. And option A says our skull's a beaver, which is correct. The skull we've been working with is a beaver. So you're gonna go ahead and work through this key with your skull. There are a couple of tricky things I wanna point out. So first with uh, the incisors, you'll notice that it says has one in, like for number one, when it said one long yellow incisor on each side. Okay. If we take a look at my skull, right, there are two yellow orange incisors. So in skull science, they like to talk about the left side and the right side separately. So even though I have two incisors total, I only have one on each side. So make sure when you're counting the incisors that you're gonna cut that number in half, okay? So if yours has six incisors, you only have three on each side. Next, on some of our skulls, when you're counting the molars, there might be a really small molar that's kind of hard to tell if it's a molar or not. And we'll point that out in the picture and let you know if it's considered a molar or not. All right. Now let's see how we're gonna write down our answers. So take a look at page 14. The first thing you're gonna do is write down which number skull you're working with. So if you're working with number five, number nine, or number 11, go ahead and write that here. Then you're gonna work your way through your key and figure out what animal it is. Once you have your guess, you're gonna write on that line below, my skull is a, in my case a beaver, but whatever animal you figure out, write my skull is a, and then if you're feeling really like you're understanding how to do this, how to figure out skulls, you can actually open up the pictures for the other two skulls you didn't work with and try and figure out what animals they are. And for them, there's gonna be one more extra answer we want. So first you're gonna put the number, so number nine, 11, or five, then what animal you figure out it is. So my skull is a, once again, we're gonna say by example, a beaver, but whatever animal you figure out. And then as an extra little piece of information, I want you to write what hypothesis, okay? I want you to write your hypothesis for if it's a carnivore or herbivore and why. So remember those different things that make it a carnivore or herbivore, herbivore, the incisors, the canines, the molars, and remember the format for your hypothesis is I think blank because blank. For example, I think my skull is a herbivore because it has no canines. So we're gonna go ahead and pause right here and that way you're gonna take like the next five minutes or if you wanna try all three skulls, 10, 15 minutes and try to write down these answers and then once we're done with this pause, we'll come back and we'll have the answers for you on the board so you know what animals you're actually working with. Now let's go over our answers for our dichotomous key. If you chose skull number five, that would have ended up being the mountain beaver. If you notice, the mountain beaver had that really small kind of weird extra molar we were talking about that's a little hard to tell. If you went to skull number nine, that is gonna end up being a raccoon. And if you went to skull number 11, that is gonna end up being a coyote. If you wanna learn more about these animals, we'll have a link down below to kind of some information about each one that are the animals that you could have chose from and actually all the other skulls that normally are a part of this lesson. And with that, we wanna thank you for watch, watching our virtual NIC lessons. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned a lot and we hope to see you again in some other video.